Hello, this is Mitch from EnjoyingTheRide.com with another iBot video update. My wife and I recently completed a trip to Acadia National Park in beautiful Bar Harbor, Maine. Along the way, though, we stopped at the recently completed Penobscot Narrows Bridge Observatory in Prospect, Maine. For all you bridge geeks out there, and I must admit that I know a few of you, this bridge is an engineering marvel. Kim and I took an elevator to the top of the left tower, which is 437 feet above the Penobscot River, making this the tallest bridge observatory in the world. We had some stunning views. Here is the Penobscot River emptying into the Atlantic Ocean on the horizon. This is a view of the paper mill where my friend Preston works. And here's a look at Fort Knox, which was established in 1844, not to be confused with Fort Knox in Kentucky, where the U.S. Treasury's gold is stored. Here are Kim and I on top of Cadillac Mountain at Acadia National Park in Bar Harbor. It was a perfect day. Cool breezes, bright sun, puffy white clouds. Here I am operating my iBot wheelchair in balance mode on the wheelchair accessible trails on top of Cadillac Mountain. Only a small portion of the trails here are wheelchair accessible, but I'm not complaining. I mean, this is a mountaintop after all, and I was in my iBot after all. Whenever I'm up in balance mode, I always get a lot of curious looks and comments. I'll admit, I get a kick out of it. I've become an iBot exhibitionist. But I had even more curious looks and comments than usual when I was in balance mode on this mountaintop. Note the lady in front of me who was navigating the accessible trails in a more traditional wheelchair. By climbing some uneven, rocky steps with my eyeball, I gained access to many more trails on top of Cadillac Mountain, like the trail you see here. That's what the iBot does for me. It allows me to go places and experience things that most wheelchair users cannot. I wish that everyone who needed an iBot could have one. But our society is simply not yet as evolved as our technology is. On these trails, I stayed mostly in four-wheel drive mode because they were steeper and rougher than the accessible trails. They had a lot more cracks and crevices, too. My wife scolds me when I take too many chances in my iBot, so she was pleased to see me on four wheels instead of two on this part of the mountaintop. Remember those steps I mentioned earlier? They are definitely non-standard steps, because so the iBot struggled with them. A bit in stair climbing mode. So I decided to descend these same steps in four wheel drive mode. I asked my wife to video me doing this, but instead she thought it more prudent to sit the camera on a rock so that she could stand behind me. There was nothing she could have done to help me, but she just felt better being nervous near me as opposed to being nervous further away from me. I kind of make a habit of pushing the iBot beyond its stated design limitations in a variety of ways. This attitude has only left me in a difficult situation a couple of times. Once at a restaurant, I remember, and once at a hunting camp. But I've never hurt anyone, including myself. As you can see, I'm taking things slowly on these steps because they are so uneven. The situation was definitely not covered in the iBot manual. As you can see, the landings are just wide enough to allow all four wheels to fit. This is what made my descent and four-wheel drive possible. We had a wonderful trip to Bar Harbor, made better by my iBot. Oh, check out this photo I found from Cadillac Mountain in 1999, two years before my MS diagnosis. I'm the guy on the far right. I won't say that this photo was taken in better times, because I still enjoy my life very much today, but I will say this photo was taken during healthier times. If that guy in the photo had any idea what was coming. To learn more about my life with multiple sclerosis and my iBot experiences, please visit my website at www.enjoyingtheride.com. Thanks for watching.